Uh, I just really wanted to share with you a queuing problem um, that you know I really took a lot of time to try and figure out myself how to do it fast. Um, I just want to rewind a little bit and just kind of frame uh, what was going on. And I think it's a pretty interesting problem to come to um, just from any sort of computer science technology thought process. Um, and it, it's really a simple one, but I, I mean, I'll show you how um, I worked with like the service bus, so a queuing technology, um, to achieve what I wanted to. Um, but the root of the problem is, is how do you make something happen at a specific time? And that might sound like really easy, but if you really think about what a specific time means, first off, um, for like a computer to do something at a very specific time is actually quite challenging. And there's actually a couple layers to this, but let's start with the first one. Let's say we want to um, have a task execute at 101 p.m. Okay? So that seems pretty straightforward. But the first thing that comes to mind really is, is like what is time from the perspective of what does 101 actually mean? Um, and this is where it starts becoming fairly interesting in terms of um, like what's the resolution that you want? So 101 with zero seconds and then how many milliseconds uh, of latency are you, are you able to take on? So, this is where I think the, the problem lies. If you want something to occur at that ex very explicit nano, nano, picosecond, whatever it is, I mean, this gets really challenging, even if you're working like with threads. Um, the amount of time to get that resolution right is, is, uh, is pretty hard. Now, the other thing that you need to think about from my perspective is that we were running software on a cloud solution. Um, so we might have, um, you know, 50 servers uh, that are working on this problem, but you only want this to be executed once on your servers. So how would you do that? So the combination of these two things um, is quite interesting, and it's actually a fairly hard problem. Um, if you have an easy solution, please let me know. Um, what I chose to do, I'm going to run through really quick here, and I'll, I'll kind of show you the resolution I got it to. And I'll give you two problem domains. Um, so there's a company here in Vancouver, um, and they really do like uh, let's just let's just consider it like batch notifications to Twitter, and a lot of them are kind of marketing focused. Uh, so if you know anything about marketing, um, if you are a company and you want to tweet, you want to do that at like three o'clock on Friday. Now, what if you were a company that were providing those tweets? But you had a million clients that want to tweet at 3 o'clock on Friday. Yes, that's where it gets challenging. So they, um, they, what they would do is they would buffer out everything they needed into memory across multiple servers. And like, I mean, it got better than this, but they would cross their fingers and, you know, they were hopeful that every server was able to make that request. Um, because if one failed, even if it could recover, it would still take 30 seconds or a minute to recover. So you can start thinking of those problems um, as, as part of the challenge with uh, figuring out the right solution for this. Um, the actual point of case that I was working on um, that really got me into this problem domain um, was the idea of like an auction and an auction going live. Um, so when an auction goes live, um, we want it to go live at that time. Um, and if it doesn't, um, it's a really bad experience. Um, so the, the tighter the resolution we can have, the better, because there would also be like workflow that would be spun out. So think of things like emails and notifications and this and that. So basically, if the auction goes live, um, and if, it's, if the resolution isn't very good, like even if it's 45 seconds above, um, you know, you might not send an email for, you know, one and a half minutes. Um, so then the user thinks that the auction didn't go live for like, you know, <laughs> two or three minutes before they get the auction. And if it's a 30 minute auction or something, that's like 10% of the time gone, right? So, 
So you can kind of understand there where I was coming from that, that this resolution um, becomes super, super critical. So I think I can erase this and I'll just kind of go through my thoughts on how to make this work on Azure. Now, we were doing a lot of queuing. Um, so queuing to me was a great way um, to isolate the 50 servers. Um, so we could have as many servers as we wanted, as we needed, <laughs> um, and you know theoretically only one would get the message. So this guy would get the message and then he would do the workflow. And then we could kind of forget about the problem of if we have 20 servers or if we have one server to some degree. We would just have to figure out what the right balance was depending on how many messages there are in the queue. Um, so that's kind of the first thing that the queue gave us. Um, on top of that was like retry and resilience and all that. Now, when we first stepped up to the plate, and this is kind of more in beta, right? Uh, we were doing like polling. Um, so that quickly did not meet the spec. You know, even if you're polling like every second, um, you, you become latent a lot of the time, right? So with the service bus, they provide you with an event-driven system. Um, yeah, so just events. So basically when the message enters the queue, it'll fire an event, um, and therefore uh, this will take action, you know, with the kind of the lowest latency from the, the publisher putting it onto here um, for this to occur. So whatever the minimum latency is, um, I think, you know, you're talking maybe 20 milliseconds on the service bus. Um, and we didn't have a lot of data going through it, so let's just, we'll just use the 20 milliseconds um, from publisher time um, to the actual server saying go do the work. Now that's great, but that obviously doesn't take into account the time that you want um, that message to be worked on. So by doing this right here, all you have is right now the publisher publishes a message and it gets driven. So that doesn't really help us with that, um, you know, 1 p.m., 101, uh, zero seconds problem, right? Because this will just do it, you know, if it was 8 at night, published at 8 at night, um, it would just be released at 8 at night. So the nice thing the service bus offers is you, there's actually an NQ time. So there's a time that you can tell it to enter the queue. So the publisher would say, I want this dequeued um, for 101, uh, maybe the following day, right? Um, and so that would give us the ability that at 101, the event would get fired. And this got us pretty close to solving the problem. So if we just kind of write this out, I know I'm gonna have to do this again, but that's fine. So you have a publisher, um, and it's going to publish a message at 101, and we'll just assume um, all the trailing decimals. Uh, and so that actually, it's, it's kind of like it doesn't enter the queue um, when that happens. Um, and what happens is when this time elapses, that is when it enters the queue. And so then this, this, the event would be driven. And then, you know, that's where the server would actually start doing the work. So the publisher, by putting it at 101, it kind of acts like it's not in the queue yet. And it's actually the time is NQ at. So that's really telling the service bus to put it in the queue at this time. So until then, it's in the queue, but it's not accessible through like a get um, call and it doesn't drive like an event. So I hope that makes sense. The thing about this is, I mean, it's a service, so you could have some latency. There's also some concurrency boundaries um, that you would have here potentially. Um, and so what we were finding was, we were finding the point that basically our software would get it um, would be um, in the range of like 101 with six seconds maybe, and this would be as it started hitting our code. Um, and let's just say we had you know 50 lines of code. 
Um, so as we exited, we'll just pretend that it was um, 101, uh, 12, we'll just kind of double it or something, right? And so this is where the, our workflow happens that needed to happen. Um, and so already here in my mind is we're, to me, we're 12 seconds from the point at which our auction should have gone, should have went live. And again, um, in, when we're in the second range, it was just much too high for me. Um, and so the first thing here is I think that what I found, and I know these, these numbers might be a bit deceiving, but actually the biggest problem was here um, with like that six second gap. Um, I could make the most, um, I could get it to the closest time if I worked on this time frame, which would be like this time frame um, versus this time frame. So if this was six seconds and this was two seconds, um, then, you know, if I could fix that six seconds, then I would achieve more. And so this, this when I was sitting there thinking about this problem, this really brought back um, the case that I stated first where this company that I know, and I, I mean, I didn't work on their problem, but I kind of understood what they were doing, um, was the idea was to buffer it in memory. And so what I worked out was that we would actually enqueue the message um, for, oops, I shouldn't have count, done a boundary like this. Anyways, 12, um, 50, Oh no, that'd be fine. We just gotta go like um, one zero zero um, fifty five, and then this got mixed. So what what I started doing was I would back off the time that we would publish, meaning that it would enter the queue five seconds early, but I would track that I want it at that specific time, and so we would get that message. Um, much closer to the time that we want it. Um, like, let's just pretend we get it at um, 57. Here, let's write this up a bit. So the event gets pushed at 157. And then what we'd actually do is we'd actually stop the thread here. And so to me, that's what I would call a buffer. So the nice thing about doing this is we already have the message in memory. We're ready to work on it. We buffer it for, you know, hopefully less than a second, but in this case, we'll just say like, we're gonna buffer for three seconds. And so until that's done, um, it's just gonna sit there in memory. And the nice thing about that is we had our concurrency really high, so we'd be able to buffer hundreds of messages um, so that if all of our items were gonna go live at 9 a.m., they would all be in memory, all be ready to go, and then they just go boom at the same time. Now, this buffer would sit there, and when it was when it was ready, then it would enter our code base. And so that's where we started seeing um, that we were able to get it. Oops, we gotta get that that second back or that minute back. Kind of one oh one uh, zero zero, and then. I was able to get it down to probably like that level where it would be uh, one to four milliseconds off. Um, and to me, that was, I was comfortable with that. Um, and so this is, this has all been released on NuGet at this point. Um, all of this whole process, the idea that you specify the time in the, in the code, it actually backs that time off by a small interval and then the receiver actually buffers it out um, until we hit the actual time that, that you want to queue at. Um, and then this is giving you the resolution within that like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine milliseconds. Um, and it, it varies on load a bit, but this is getting really, really close to the actual um, having something execute at a specific time. Um, again, across as many servers as you want, um, and then it's really fine-tuning that, that resolution. Um, so we were able at the end of the day, um, you know, to pretty much guarantee that within a second, uh, the auction would be going live in this case. 
Um, but this took a lot of work and a lot of like uh, playing with, with the service bus and really working out um, how to solve this. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. If you've ever encountered a problem like this, I'd be really interested to see how you solved it. Um, I thought this was a good way to do it. Um, and really just hit me up uh, in the comments or find me on Twitter at JeffKingABC. Anyways, take care.